Welcome back. In the previous video, we understood the need for loading external data. We also created a new SwellKit project for the section on data loading. We defined a product's route with an H1 tag and a link in the homepage to navigate to that product's route. We also added the JSON server package, which runs JSON server on localhost port 4000 giving us access to the list of products at slash products endpoint. What we want to achieve in this video is to load this data in our products page and render it as part of the HTML. Let's understand how. We know that plus page.svelte file is a SvelteKit convention for defining a page that gets automatically mapped into a URL in the browser. Now it turns out, if you want to load data into this page.svelte file, there is another convention you have to follow. First, you have to create a sibling file called plus page.js. Second, this file should export a function called load. So export const load, and this is an async function. Third, the load function should return an object. When you follow this convention, SwellKit will automatically provide this object as props to the page.svelte component file. Let me show you how that works before we go about using the products JSON. In page.js, I'm going to declare a new constant, title, and set it to the string list of available products. To the object that is being returned, add that property. Now in our page, we can add the script section and access a prop called data. So export let data. This data prop always refers to the object that is returned from the load function. In our HTML, Instead of the hard-coded string, we can now bind data.title. If we head back to the browser, we can see the same title being displayed, list of available products. Of course, at the moment, we are not really fetching data from an external API. So let's go back to VS Code and fetch the list of products from our JSON server. In page.js, within the load function, const response is equal to await fetch and we copy paste the URL to the products endpoint localhost 4000 slash products. Next, we convert the response to JSON. Await response dot JSON. Finally, as part of the return statement, we also return products. With the products list now being loaded into the page, we can bind it to the HTML using an each block. In the script section, first get hold of the products. So const products is equal to data.products. Next in the HTML, each block products as product. I'm going to add a div tag, an h2 tag, where we render product.title, and a paragraph tag for product description. I'll also add an hr tag for some separation. If we now save the file and head back to the browser, we see the list of three products being displayed. This list is fetched from an external API. Now there is one very important point you need to be aware of. If you take a look at the browser console, you can see we have a warning. Loading localhost 4000 slash products using window.fetch. For best results, use the fetch that is passed to your load function. What the warning is basically trying to tell us is that 
we should use the fetch function that SwellKit provides as part of the argument passed to the load function. We should not be using the native fetch function. So back in page.js, let's specify an argument called load event. And within the function, destructure fetch from load event. We then automatically use that instead of window.fetch. Save the file, head back to the browser, and the warning has disappeared. But of course, this raises the question, what exactly does SwellKit's fetch function do that native fetch doesn't? Let's understand that in the next video. But for now, this is pretty much how you load page data using the load function defined in plus page.js. All right, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.